All right, and this series has just been awesome, hasn't it, y'all? I have enjoyed uh, teaching this series. It is a series that we based off of your, your survey at Easter, and, and we're answering questions like, how do I forgive, and how do I get out of a spiritual rut, which we talked about last week. Today, we're going to talk about how to, how to deal with difficult people, and I know probably none of you have to do that, right? Nobody has to deal with difficult people, which is not true. We all do. But uh, before I get into that, I wanted to kind of tell you, and just remind you that we are gearing up for baptism right after the service today. We have several people getting baptized. And if you remember last week, I, I said, hey, if you, didn't, if you don't come prepared, we're going to be prepared for you. One of the points last week in the message was that we've got to cut the excuses. Or I don't know if you remember me talking about that. And everybody was like, yeah, we've got to cut the excuses. So if you, if you are ready to be baptized, then, then I'm just saying, cut the excuse and we're going to baptize you today. It's going to be awesome, and, and we're going to have a great time right after the service. Now, let me tell you what baptism is. I'm, I'm kind of having fun with you, but baptism is, is really uh, a call from, from Jesus. He, and he, he said, go into the world, make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. And baptism is simply this. It is a symbol of, it's symbolic of a decision that you've made. So you made a decision which was private in your heart between you and the Lord. Baptism is you going public with that faith. And, and it's symbolic because when you get in that baptistry tub, we, we lay you backwards. And that's a symbol of the old you going, going into the grave, a water grave. And you're not coming back out. When you come back out, it's a new you. Nothing changed about you physically. Like you, you didn't lose wrinkles or anything like that. You still, still look the same, right? But it's symbolic of now you're resurrecting a new person. The scripture says it this way. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. So that's what baptism is. And it's just you uh, celebrating with everybody else, going public with your faith. I've made a decision. I've decided. That's why when, when we give you shirts, we, every person who gets baptized, we give you a shirt that says, I have decided on the front of it. Because we want you to be proud of that decision. So that's happening after the service. And then small group rally day. Man, it is, it is going to be so much um, fun here in just a little bit. We're going to dismiss. I'm going to try to preach shorter. Believe it or not, I'm trying to preach a shorter message today. So that you have plenty of time to get out there and shop those groups. But what will happen is all those tables uh, represent small groups. There's about 25 or 26 small groups, which is incredible for our first semester. This is the first time we've done groups. And every one of those tables will have a leader out there. And you'll be able to just, you'll, you'll be able to just shop those groups, see which one you like. They're interest-based. And so you'll be able to uh, talk to the leaders. And, and I just encourage you this. Find a couple to go to, two or three, and then uh, and, and visit those and then stay with the one you really like, right? And it won't hurt anybody's feelings. It, they, they, they are aware that your, their group might not be for you, and that's okay, all right? So we want you to get in a group, and that'll happen right after the service for Rally Day. But we're talking about, we're in this last part, the final installment of our series called You Ask For It, and talking about how to deal with difficult people. Now, next week, I'm giving a state of the church update, and you, you don't want to miss that because I'm going to celebrate where we've been, what God has done in the first uh, 19 weeks. Today, we're 19 weeks old, y'all. That is incredible. Yeah, let's give God praise for that. Hey, uh, I, I don't know too many 19-week-old uh, infants that are this big. You know what I'm saying? Like, God has been good to City Hope, and, and in 19 weeks, it's just been incredible. We, we want to celebrate that, but also kind of pave the way for what's he doing now and where are we headed? What, what's next for City Hope? And, and talk a little bit about that. That's next Sunday. So if you're ready to jump in today, just give me a uh-huh. All right. All right. Hey, that's good. That's good. So what my, my goal today is really this. It's to help you find a way to counter the crazy makers in your life. Mm, come on, somebody, the crazy makers. So I need you to turn to your neighbor and say, this message is for you today. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then turn to your second choice, the person you ignored the first time, and tell them, I'm glad you're here today, right? Uh-huh. Glad you're here. It's for all those, those crazy makers in our lives. Really, let's just kick straight off with what the Bible says about, about difficult people. It actually says the words, 
difficult people. Uh, and it's found in, in uh, where is it found? In the book of 2 Timothy. Uh, it says, again I say. Now, uh, Paul wouldn't say it this way unless he's already told them. So he's saying, I've told you once. Like, when I was a kid, we had this rap, like, if I told you once, I told you a thousand times. If I tell you again, I'm going to whoop you behind, right? <laughs> Paul is saying that. He's saying, I've told you once. I don't want to have to tell you again. Don't get involved in foolish, ignorant arguments. Oh, come on, y'all. We, we do that sometimes. They only start fights. And he says, a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, or, but they've got to be kind to everybody. Be able to teach, and here it is, be patient with difficult people. Jesus, you could have left that line out right there. We, be patient with difficult people, but Paul calls us to do that, and it goes on to say, gently instruct those people who oppose the truth. Perhaps God will change those people's hearts, and, and maybe they'll learn the truth if you're gentle with difficult people instead of being the hammer and coming down on them. And, and, and we're going to talk about how to handle them in just a little bit. But instead of just coming right back at, at them with the same fierce anger that they came at you, just be gentle with them. Maybe they'll learn the truth. And, and then they will come to their senses and escape from the devil's trap. So they're trapped. They've, they're in a trap by the devil. You understand that, right? They're difficult because they've, they've believed some lies. They're, they're difficult because they, they see people through uh, hurts and pains and the wrong filters of their life. So he says it'll, it will free them from the devil's trap because they, or for they have been held captive by him to do whatever he wants them to do. They're, they're like, it's like they're a puppet on the string. So the truth is that we all have difficult people in our lives. And you might be here today saying, I feel like I've got all the difficult people in my life, right? Nobody else has difficult people, just me. Kind of reminds me of a story of a, a, a guy. He, he was a grown man. He stayed the night with his mom and uh, woke up the next day on Sunday, and his mom said, all right, let's go to church. And he said, I'm not going to church, Mom. And she said, yes, you are. I, the, the same rule applies. As long as you stay in this house, you're doing what I tell you to do. You're going to church. He said, I don't want to go to church. And she, they fought back and forth for a little bit. And she said, why don't you want to go to church? He said, it's the people. They're just difficult. And she said, but honey, you have to go to church. You're the pastor. <laughs> I, that's not me. I, can't, I, I, I love coming to church. There's, as far as I'm concerned, we don't have any difficult people here. I, I love what God's doing at City Hope. But, you know, some pastors, they don't have, they don't have it like we've got it here. It's just such a blessing. But you may feel like that sometimes. I don't want to go to work. It's the people. I don't want to do this. It's the people. You know, we, we say things like, oh, it, um, Christianity would be great if it wasn't for the Christians. <laughs> oh, right? Because we can all be difficult sometimes. So what uh, uh, Max Licato said it this way. He, he, he said, some people are just called to be missionaries of misery. <laughs> Sent into our world to wreak havoc. It's like they went to the growth track. That we're having growth track today. Step one. If you haven't been through it, you, you ought to go through it. It's like they went to the growth track and they learned their, their purpose. And step two was to ruin your life. <laughs> to just, to cause you pain and misery. But th that's not, that's not what, the way it should be. It doesn't have to be like that. So what I want us to do first is to understand Try to understand difficult people. I think understanding them is half of the battle. And if we can understand why they're difficult, it'll help us understand where they're coming from. It'll also help us understand why we can be difficult sometimes. Because, you know, you might be thinking everybody else is difficult only to, only to realize you're the one, the one who's being difficult. So, uh, have you ever heard the phrase, hurt people hurt people? And that's so true. Hurting people hurt other people. Um, and I believe that there's always something bigger. There's, an, there's really another reason why uh, th they lash out the way they do. Like the thing that you think caused them to, to blow up on you probably isn't the, the real issue. There's usually something deeper, something else going on. It's, have you seen these videos of people in fast food restaurants who just go bananas and go berserk? Be they're in Popeye's, for example. They're like, I, mean, I need my three-piece. I've been waiting for 15 minutes. 
they get their three piece. Where are my biscuits? I don't have my biscuits. I'm, I'm, I'm going to come over the table on you. Right? And, and, and they go bananas because of their three piece and their biscuits weren't right. But it was something else that caused them to behave that way. It wasn't a three piece and some biscuits. Come on, y'all. We know that. So let, I want to talk about the DNA of, of a difficult person for a little bit. And, and the first thing I want to do is ask you, why are there difficult people? Why? Let's answer that. And I think, I think there's difficult people in life because, because we live in a fallen and sinful world. That's just the bottom line. We live in a fallen and sinful world. We can all be difficult at times. Romans 3.23 says we've all sinned and we all fall short. We've all fallen short. We, we will continue to fall short of the glory of God. We live in a sinful and fallen world. That's the first reason why there are difficult people. But the second reason why there are difficult people is because the enemy of our souls knows the value of relationships. And he will do everything in his power to put a wedge between them. He'll do everything he can to put a wedge between you and somebody else to bring a difficulty. And, and I say it uh, like this. Why, why does he focus so much on relationships? Why does he focus so much on, on putting a wedge or maybe causing people to be difficult? I think it's because relationships are the point of life. It, it is like that's where so much of our joy comes from. I mean, we, it's, the, it's where everything flows. We have such good relationships in this life. And, and we can have the greatest joy, but we can also have the greatest wounds through relationships, through friendships and people. And, and, it, and it can hurt us and it can wound us. The relationships, we were made to be relational. That's why we get married. That's why we have kids. That's why we play sports and why we go to clubs and why we have small groups and why we do all of these things with other people is because God made us to be in community. 100%. So the enemy wants to do everything he can to put a wedge between us and other people. Relationships are where we find the greatest joy, but where we also find the greatest wounds. And what happens is those wounds are caused by conflict. You can go back two weeks and watch a message on forgiveness and see a progression of, of how we end up in unforgiveness. And, and this is where it all starts is some sort of conflict in relationships when we're dealing with somebody. And if we're not careful, we start to project that onto other people. We start seeing other people the same way that we saw them. They treated us this way, so I'm just, I'm just going to... I put these, lens, these lenses on, and I look through these lenses of past hurt and past failures and past relational conflicts, and I project that on everybody else. That's what we do. And, and I, I got a few visuals that might help, you to, might help you to understand where I'm coming from on this. This is the lens, the lens of magnification. You just make everything bigger. Everything's a big deal. Oh, no, she didn't. Right? Every, everything's a problem. Nothing can stand on its own because you got to make something big out of it. Well, she didn't really mean that. What she meant was this. No, she really meant that, but, but you just magnify everything because of how you've been treated and how you've dealt with other people and, and, and you're wearing these lens of magnification. I, 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 it's... It might cause you to get a little dizzy. I'm just telling you. But you put these bad boys on and, 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 and they filter everything through a, it's a big deal kind of a thing. Do you, do you hear me? So it's the lens of magnification. Then, then you got, this is, this is a good one here. It's the lens of, the lens of offense. The, yeah, the lens of offense where you see everything and everybody through how, they, how you've been hurt. And, and you always got something to talk about. I'm not finished talking. We got we, we to finish this. Well, we've been talking about it for years. When are we going to let it go? When are we going to drop it? And we see everything through that lens of offense and what somebody else did to me and how they hurt me and how they wounded me. And, and it's the lens of, a, of offense. There's always... A filter of what happened to us and what, what went wrong. Well, then, uh, 
Then we have, this is, this is a good one. Y'all got to turn my back on you for this one. It's the lens of me, myself, and I. <laughs> oh, you know it's all about me. Life and relationships. If it doesn't benefit me, then why do I even need to play this game? You know what I'm saying? Like, what's, what's the big deal? It's all about, like, the, the whole world revolves around me. And these are fun, man. These are party glasses right here. If you're having a bad day, just wear these bad boys to the board meeting. You might get fired, but it'll be fun, right? You'd be like, yeah, what's up? It's the lens of me, myself, and I. You, you, that's how we see our relationships sometimes. It's, what about me? What, how's this going to affect me? And so we see people through those same lenses. And it causes us to take on different types of behavior. And we, we react different ways. And we react in ways that could hurt other people, could hurt us. And, and I, I want to give you a list of, of some types of people, some types of behavior that we see in, in this world. And they're caused by these different lenses that we look through. And, and it might be humorous at times, but it's a serious list nonetheless. All right? So the first, the first one on this list is the hammer. Oh, man, the hammer is... Like, I'm going to, I'm, I'm telling you one time and one time only, aggressive, harsh, hostile, you were wrong and I was right kind of a person, right? They express themselves through intimidation. Well, if you don't like it, I'm leaving. Oh, well, I guess I better change then because I don't want to lose you. And, I, and so they express themselves through intimidation. They criticize you. They attack you. It's the hammer. It's I'm coming down on you. Could be a coworker. Could be a teammate. Could be a spouse, who's who's being that difficult person. And then we have the megaphone. Oh man, just the chatterbox won't stop talking. Right, and they will talk you into submission. You, you don't want to get in a headlock, but you're going to get in a headlock because they just talk you into it. It's like, oh, it seems like a good idea to get in this headlock, right? Just talk, talk, talk. Always having something to say. And then there's the bubble buster. The bubble buster. This person, uh, they never have anything positive to say. Uh, they're always looking for the bad in things. Do you know somebody like this? Don't know elbows right now, but they will deflate you. On anything that's going on in life. You're like, man, Johnny played so good in soccer today. He scored three goals. And they're like, yeah, but did you see number five on the other team? He ran circles around Johnny. What's the deal, man? Like, what's the... You're like, man, I had a great day at work. It was awesome. Yeah, but I heard him talking in the break room. They're thinking about firing you. What? Like, just deflate you all the time. Just, just cut you out at the knees. The bubble buster. And, and they're seeing through these lenses that we just talked about, right? And then there's the volcano. The volcano, man, this person is spewing hot lava language everywhere. Nothing kind to say. They're, they're just going to let you have it. It's just volcanic. They're going to erupt. And uh, hey, if I'm honest with you, um, I, I, I used to do this sometimes. I would, you know, you, you just let things pile up and pile up and pile up. And then, and then somebody's going to pay for it. Some innocent soul who d didn't deserve it and... You, they're going to pay for your volcanic attitude. And then you have the space cadet. They don't know anybody else on the earth exists. It's just like you try to talk to them and there's nobody home, right? <laughs> they're just alone in, in the world. They, they don't know anything else is happening. Like it's just, it's just them. And then there's the clam. Oh, they, they're going to give the, they're gonna give the silent treatment, Right? I'm just going to turn my, I don't have anything to say to you right now. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm just turning my back on you. I don't have anything to talk about. We're done. We're done to clam. I'm clamming up. I'm shutting down. I'm not going to talk. And then there's the nitpicker. <laughs> They're going to find something wrong. That one, did you see that blade of grass, babe? Did you see it in, in the yard? That one blade's just too long. We had neighbors one time when we first moved to Alabama. We lived in a, in a duplex, in, in an apartment complex, townhome. And um, our neighbors was, were Malcolm and Helen. I'm going to tell you something uh, funny that I wasn't planning on telling you. I wasn't even planning on telling you this story. But Helen, they were both elderly. And Helen, 
used to sit on the front of, of their town home in her fishnet shirt with just a, a, a underwear on under it. And she's like 70-something years old. I'm like, Helen, come on. The reason I bring them up is because they used to plant ryegrass rye grass only in front of our two townhomes. And we came home one day, and honest to God, they were cutting it with scissors. Out, I promise you. And Malcolm talked like this right here. The hurricanes were coming up. Katrina and, and this one, that, that happened. And he's like, Ben, you reckon we're going to be all right from them hurricanes? I think we're going to be all right, Malcolm. Nitpickers, they're highly critical. They, and this wasn't Malcolm. I don't, want to, I don't want to cast that shadow on him. But always finding something to complain about. They're pointing out everybody's mistakes. And they're unreasonably perfection, perfectionists. Unreasonable perfectionist, just over the top, over the top. And then there's the crybaby, the crybaby. They, they whine to get control. I don't know if y'all can see that real well, but that's a cute baby. It's just crying. Hey, we, we do that sometimes. We cry to get our way. We cry to let everybody else know that, that something's, ha- something's wrong and I'm not, it's, it's, I'm not getting my way. I'm, I'm not, I, I want to pout to get control kind of an attitude. And then... There's the user. This one is, is dangerous because it's manipulation. It's just going to use you to get whatever they want. They use people to, to get their own way, and that's not okay. We don't, we don't live life that way, and it's toxic. toxic. They use guilt and, and, and condemnation and just to get what they want. And then there's the garbage collector. <laughs> the garbage collector. Man, this guy... I'm telling you, he, he, he never forgets anything in life. And he uh, is constantly rehearsing everything that hap- has happened to him his entire life. And he, he gathers it up. And he takes it from conversation to conversation, from relationship to relationship. And they say things like, back in 65, you ate the last piece of pizza. And it hurt me. I'm wounded. I'm, I'm, I've been dealing with it. Yeah, you've been dealing with it for a long time, man. 60, that's 65, dude, that's, that's crazy. You've been, you've been ra- bringing that around a long time. It's the garbage collector. They just take their junk from conversation to conversation and spill it out. And they're so, so um, no fun to be around, right? Difficult people. So in each one of these behaviors, you have a choice of how you're going to respond. You can come back at them with the same way they came at you. Or you, you can take a different approach. You can intensify it or you can deflate it. You, what, you, you have the choice. Nobody can make that choice but you. I want to give you three quick responses. How, like choices that you can make. And the first one is you can choose to curse it. That just means like, like just live angry about it. And... and, and and just be so frustrated, so mad about the situation. Not do anything about it, but it, it, it dictates your day. The rest of your day is just, it's shot because you chose to just let it be a curse. You can, you can nurse it. That's the second one. You can nurse it. You can, you can rock it and feed it. And oh, I just love my little, my, my little difficult person over here. And you can respond to them and... And with anger and lash out, and you can keep it alive by by just feeding it and continuing to continuing to coddle it, feed it until it really becomes bigger than than it ought to be, right? Or or you can you can reverse it. You can just say, hey, you know what? I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to I'm not going to live like that. This is not the way I'm gonna I'm not going to play this game. So you can you can curse it. Just kidding. I was about to rap on y'all. Skinny B. You know what I'm saying? That's my, that's my name. You can curse it. You can nurse it. Reverse it. Y'all didn't know I DJed on the side, right? <laughs> my, my son's got his hands in his face. Okay. 
We're just having a little fun, right? You, you can make those choices, but in, in all reality, the rest of our time together today, what I want to do is just explore God's Word and just kind of learn the biblical response. How do we handle these difficult people, these hammers, right? How do we do this? And the first one is, we've got to realize that you can't please everybody. You can't please everybody. And you're trying to. That, that's a, a, lot of, a lot of us are people pleasers, trying to make everybody happy, and we just we can't do it. In fact, John, in John chapter 5, verse 30, Jesus himself said, By myself, I can't do anything. I, I can do nothing. I judge only as I hear, and my judgment is just, for I seek not to please myself. I'm not, I'm not trying to please me, y'all. And Jesus said, I, I live to please him who sent me. So we got to live like Jesus, not to please myself, not to please everybody else, but only to please God, only to live for him. And, and you, you can't use this as an excuse to be rude. You can't use it as an excuse to blow up on people. I'm not living to please you. I'm living to please God. And I'm blessed and highly favored, so there. No, you can't, that's, you can't use it as an excuse to blow up on others. The second thing is you have to refuse to play the game. Just, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to get involved. I'm not going I'm, I'm to play this. I, I, I don't have to respond the way that you've lashed out at me. I, just, I don't have to live this way, and I'm not going to live this way. Jesus said it this way in John chapter 2. It says that Jesus didn't trust them. Now, who didn't he trust? People that were constantly trying to kill him, plotting against him. People who were, were always against him. And he said, I, I don't trust him because he knew all about people. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that you shouldn't trust people. You ought to have people in your life you can trust and tell anything to. You should. But Jesus, at the same time, he knew he couldn't trust everybody, and he wasn't going to play their game. He wasn't going to get involved in all the drama and all the gossip and and he didn't get up on Sunday morning and, and, you know, like shotgun blast everybody. If he had something to say to the Pharisees, he just told, them, told it to their faces. You know, like, hey, you, uh, you, you broods of vipers. How about that? Like, he, he just, he confronted them themselves. He didn't get involved in all of the drama and all of the he said, she said manipulation and, and lies. And this happens to us all the time, though. Somebody says something on social media. mm and you're like, yeah, I'm fixing to tell her right now. I'm going to let her know what I think about that. And you, you type up your response and you hit send. And then guess what happens? It's, the hook is set and it owns you for the rest of the day. And it's just constantly on you, nagging. And you're going back checking what other people said. And you're going to respond and this. And no, just don't get involved. Don't play their game. When you're dealing with difficult people, number three, you have to rise above it. You, you just have to choose. I'm, that's not how Jesus would respond. I'm not going to respond that way. I'm going to rise above it. In Isaiah chapter 40, it says, Those who wait on the Lord, they will renew their strength. When you wait on the Lord. They'll mount up on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. When you wait on the Lord, when you choose to do it His way, you're going to rise above that. I'm not going to play your game. I realize I can't please everybody. I'm just going to rise above it. Here's the thing about, about eagles. You can't soar with the eagles if you're clucking with the chickens. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you, you're down here doing this. You can't, no. You, you, you can't live like that. You, you got to choose, I'm not going to play that. I'm, I'm, not, I'm going to rise above it. I'm going to say nice things about the person who offended me, the person who was difficult. I'm, I'm not going to play that. Number, number four is never retaliate. Mm. But you don't know what she did to me. You don't know what he said, what he did. I got to get him back. This is a painful one because the Bible in, in the Old Testament says eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. But then Jesus came and he said, not anymore. No, we, we, don't, we don't repay evil for evil. We don't retaliate. This is, this is Peter talking here. He says, we don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. <clears throat> Ben, are you sure? 
Are you like, is this, you double check that, right? Yeah. We don't retaliate. Here's what we do. Instead, we pay them back with a blessing. But I don't want to pay them back. They hurt me. They frustrated me. We pay them back with a blessing. Years ago, we had a, uh, some friends of ours, good friends. They, uh, um, this was probably 10 or 12 years ago. They had left the church that we were serving in Alabama. And we were good friends with them. And them leaving the church meant they, couldn't, they didn't want to be our friends anymore. It was, it was painful. It hurt. We didn't understand it because everything that was surrounding it was just, as we would say, hogwash. You know what I'm saying? It just wasn't true. It wasn't, wasn't right. And uh, we were hurt by that. And I remember one night we were in a different city eating at a Japanese steakhouse because our little town didn't have one. And we were at, at Sticks eating, eating hibachi. And I saw him across the way. And my first thought was, not a good one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hope you choke on that chicken, right? <laughs> oh, hope, hope that, I, hope that, I hope that steak is just nasty taste in your mouth, right? No. That, and then as quick as I thought something bad, the Lord kind of said, why don't you pay for their dinner? It's like, I'm not trying to pay for their dinner to <laughs> hibachi grill. God, I'm not trying to spend... $300 on their meal because they were with somebody else that we knew. And I'm like, I'm, no. Okay, God, yes, I'll do it. And we bought their dinner. And guess what happened? Nothing changed. <laughs> we still weren't friends. But there was something settled in my heart that, that wouldn't have been settled had I just thought those curses in my head. You know what I'm saying? We can't retaliate. We, we can't, we, we got to give them love. We've, we've got to show love. And, and let me say it this way. We do this in our marriages and in relationships. Somebody says something hurtful to you, you, you come back. You, and we always try to find the, the point that would hurt them the most. And we say something and we jab them. And we just prod them and we poke them. You get at me, I'm getting at you. That's just the way it is. And then we're being difficult too, Right? So we're trying to deal with difficult people. How do, we, how do we walk with difficult people in this life? Well, number five, we, we have to release them. You've got to release them. Like we had to release this couple that had hurt us. We had to release them and, and not hold them to, to some standard that Jesus wasn't holding us, right? Here's the truth about people is you can't fix them. You can pray for them. You, you can lift them up in prayer. In fact, Matthew 5 says this way, I say love your enemies, pray for them. Jesus says pray for those who persecute you. Pray for difficult people in your life. And when you pray for difficult people, you're going to see them differently. All of a sudden that hate and that anger and that hurt, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to start taking a turn. And the reality is that you never know what people are going through. Remember, hurt people hurt people. So years ago, we were playing a basketball game. Garrett was, was five or six at the time, and, and he was playing a basketball game in the little city that we lived in, Coleman, Alabama, and it's about 14,000 people where everybody knows everybody, especially when you're playing sports. And one of our friends, Craig, was coaching the other team. And another friend on our team, she didn't like the the way he was calling the game. In this particular league, they were young enough where coaches are the referees. It's just, it's just developmental, right? So you, you just call it as coaches as you see it. Well, she didn't like the way that Craig was calling it. And in front of everybody, the game stopped, and she just kind of said what she had to say about him in front of everybody. And these are our friends. And, and it was hurtful. And I, I was thinking, I mean, she's given him up one side, down the other, Name calling, just you name it, bad. And I, as we left, I told Aunt Lisa, I said, that's not like her. Why, why, something, there must be something bigger happening in her life. And what I didn't know that Aunt Lisa knew was that her mom had just been diagnosed with cancer. And she needed somebody to take out her, her hate and her anger and her frustration and all this pain that she'd been feeling. And, it, and I told Craig later that day, I saw him, I said, hey, man, I just want you to know, like, this is what really is going on. And it, maybe it made him feel a little bit better. But 
when, when, we're, when we're either being difficult or we're confronted by a difficult person, we have to learn to release them. But number five, we have to learn to live redemptively. And really, it all boils down, it just boils down to forgiveness. And I know I, I just preached a message on that. But when you're dealing with a difficult person, it, it's some of the same principles apply. You're, you have to learn to give them what you have freely received. Live redemptively. And, and can I say it this way? The more that you forgive, the easier it's going to be. Just like anything you do in life, the, the more you do it, it's called discipline. You're disciplining your body. You're disciplining yourself to eat certain foods, to work out, to mow the yard on this day. Whatever it is, you, you discipline yourself, and it begins to pay off. And the more that you forgive, the easier it becomes. And you start to realize that the things that used to bother you just don't bother you anymore. The things that used to put you on edge don't put you on edge anymore. It's just not a big deal. It's not worth fighting for. And Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 says it this way, that we ought to be kind to each other. Tender-hearted, forgiving one another. This, this scripture showed up three or four times in our series. And we ought to forgive them how? Just as God through Christ has forgiven us. That's how we forgive. So, how, Ben, how do I walk with people? How do I walk with difficult people? You walk in forgiveness. You walk in re redemptive living. And here's what I've come to know over the years and what I've come to believe wholeheartedly is that people are way more important than problems. People, are the, they're the only thing that's going to make it to heaven. People are way more important than problems. I'll say it this way. People, are, people aren't the problem. And we have to learn that. So how do, we, how do we learn that? To walk in forgiveness. I've also come to know this too. That two are better than one. You might be at the end of this going, well, Ben, I, I was really hoping that you would tell me how to, how to get back at somebody, you know, how to deal with difficult people, like how to, how to kind of make them pay, you know, just like not really by anything I do, but just the way I live, it's going to like heap burning coal, coals on their head, you know, they're just going to live in misery. No, I, I, there's none of that, but what I know is that two are better than one. You might be coming out of this saying, well, maybe the best thing for me is to just avoid people at all cost, and that's not the answer. You can't work without relationships. You can't marry without relationships. You can't have children without relationships. You can't come to church without relationships. And can I say you can't do any of that with, without difficult relationships? There's always going to be difficult ones. So the answer isn't just to push people away. The answer is to bring people close you got to have somebody in your corner. Somebody fighting with you. Somebody going to bat with you. Somebody praying with you. Somebody that you could go to when you have a difficult day with somebody and say, can I just tell you about my day? And you know it's okay. You know they're not going to judge you. It's a healthy, it's a healthy relationship. And that's why today is all about small groups. When you leave here today, I've preached a shorter message so you could have time to go out there and find community. Find somebody that you can lean on. Somebody that you can connect with. And I want you to use that opportunity in just a second. Amen. Hey, can we give God praise today for His Word? If you will, just bow your heads and close your eyes with me today. Let me just... Um, let me close out with a prayer for you here today. If you're here and you say, Ben, I'm dealing with some difficult people right now. I, I, that's just the question. If, you, if that's you, just lift up your hand. I'm dealing with some difficult people in my life right now. Thank you for being honest. 
And with your hands, just keep them lifted up. I just want to pray for you real quick. God, I lift up every hand that's up right now. I thank you that you're greater than the difficulty. And Lord, we, we face problems. We face challenges. We face people in our lives sometimes who they make us crazy. God, it's just a, it, it pushes us over the edge sometimes. And we, we have a choice in how we're going to respond. So I pray for the Holy Spirit's power over every one of us. That we would respond in love. That we wouldn't, that we wouldn't retaliate. We wouldn't pay back evil for evil. But Lord, we would, we would go the extra mile. We'd rise above it. We'd release them. And we'd just bless them. And we'd speak kindness over them. We'd speak love over them. And that we would live redemptively. Knowing that we can't receive your love and receive your forgiveness and then withhold it from somebody else. So give us grace and give us strength and give us power to deal with difficult people in such a gracious and kind way, Lord, forgiving others just as you have forgiven us. And I thank you for that, Lord. And with your head still bowed, let me just ask you, if you're here today and you say, Ben, I'm ready to receive Jesus as my Lord today. I'm ready to make him Lord of my life, to to receive him as my Savior. If that's you today, just lift up your hand right where you are. And let me see see your hand. God bless you. Who else? You say, that's me, Ben. I'm ready to give my life, to give control over to him. I can't do this on my own. I've been the difficult one. And I need to surrender to him. Anybody else today? God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, just say this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, I surrender. Not my way, but your way. Your will be done in my life. Will you forgive me? Will you cleanse me, wash me, make me new, give me a fresh start, 